Oh hi, today's lesson is for beginning JavaScript engineers who are considering TypeScript and we will look at 5 quick ways that you can use TypeScript to annotate and better document your JavaScript. So let's go. Now we're actually using this website called TypeScript Exercises which is free and open source available on GitHub and I've personally quite enjoyed solving all of these. Now in the first exercise, you can see an error on line 95. The user is of an unknown type and therefore you are not allowed to access its member's name or age. A key feature of TypeScript is the ability to declare the structure of our objects. Here we can see that our users have a property name of type string, age of type number and an occupation of type string. So we can declare this type to ensure consistent usage in all our code base. Now once we have this type declared, we can use it to annotate our list of users as well as to annotate the argument to the log person function. Now with these two simple annotations in place, the error goes away and the added benefit is that if we try to access a property that does not exist on our users, we get a compile time error instead of a runtime exception. Now that we know how to annotate basic objects, let's jump into the next exercise. Let's scroll to the main code in the exercise. We can see a compile time error when we try to add a property role to an array of persons. The intention here is to create a type called person that can either be a user or an admin. Right now, we have the person's array annotated as a list of users, which is why we are getting an error when we try to add an admin. When something can be one thing or another, in our case a user or an admin, TypeScript allows you to create a union of types using the familiar or operator. And now that we have this type declared, we can use it to annotate our person's array. With this, the error in the person's array goes away but we still have some errors in our code base. Now if you scroll down, you can see that we have an error when we try to invoke log person for a person object. And the reason why that error occurs is because log person is still using the annotation user and the fix is simply changing that to the person type. Now the objective of this exercise was to learn about union types and with that said, let's jump to the next exercise. Now if we scroll down to the error in exercise 3, you can see that in the log person function, we try to read the property role from the person object and we get a compile time error. The reason for this error is that a person can either be a user or an admin and the role property does not exist on our users. Therefore, if we try to access the property without validating that it actually exists, we get a compile time error. The proper way to validate if a property exists or not in JavaScript is to use the in operator. TypeScript understands this operator as well and when we say role in person, TypeScript understands that if this condition is true, then person must have the role property and you are allowed to safely access it within that conditional block. With this simple check, the error goes away and this exercise is complete. As an added information, these conditional checks within TypeScript are called type cards. Now let's jump to the next exercise. In this particular exercise, users will have a member called type containing the literal string user and admins will have a member called type containing the literal string admin. Now if we scroll to the error in this particular exercise, we can see that we get an error when we try to access the role or the occupation. The access to these members is being guarded by the isAdmin and the isUser method. The bodies of these functions are using a check on the person.type to see if it contains the literal admin or the literal user. Now this should be sufficient to filter out admins and users. However, as far as TypeScript is concerned, isAdmin is returning a boolean and does not do any actual filtering on the type of the passed in person. Now in order to help TypeScript understand that if isAdmin returns true, it should imply that person must be of type admin, we can do that with a custom type card return annotation which follows the syntax person is admin. This tells TypeScript that if this function returns true, then person must be of type admin. And we can repeat the process for the isUser function. Such functions in TypeScript are called custom type cards. With the usage of these custom type cards, our errors go away and we can jump to the next exercise. 
Now let's scroll to the first error that we have in this particular exercise. The error in this case is occurring when we are calling the function filter users and the error is happening on the second argument where we are passing in only the property age of type number. If you look at the function, you can see that it is annotated to accept a complete user. So any properties that are missing, in our case, properties type, name and occupation, we would get a compile time error. Now the objective over here is to pass in a criteria which contains a subset of the members of the type user. So just an object with the member age of type number, as in our example, should be sufficient. There is a feature in TypeScript called map types, which allows us to take an input type and create a new return type with some members modified. For example, in our case, we want all the members to become optional. And in fact, TypeScript even ships with a built-in mapped type called partial that does exactly that. Now that we've annotated criteria to be a partial of type user, the error goes away. However, we are still protected against silly typos. For example, if you try to pass in a criteria where we've misspelled age as ages, we get a compile time error from TypeScript. Now map types are an extremely useful and powerful feature and I have a separate lesson on that and I'll leave a link to that in the cards. I've also got a lesson on the partial type and I'll leave a link to that as well. And that's all for this lesson, just kidding. If you watched till right now, leave a comment Travolta to let me know that you are a diehard fan. And with that said, let's look at one more exercise. As always, let's scroll to the error in this exercise. We have an error when we try to invoke log person for an array of users of age, as well as for an array of admins of age. These arrays are being created by the filter persons function. Now, if you look at the filter persons function, it's quite poorly annotated. The person type is just of type string and we can do better by using the union of user or admin literals. Similarly, based on our previous exercise, we know that we want the criteria to be a partial of the passed in type. In our case, that's the type person. So we annotate criteria as partial of person. And of course, our return type is also annotated as unknown and we can do better by annotating it as an array of persons. And with that, all the compile time errors go away, but we still have test failures in this particular exercise. One example of the reason for these failures is the array users of age 23. Clearly based on the name, we want this to be an array of users. However, because of the return type annotation of the filter persons function, it is an array of persons. And of course, the same will be true for the admins of age 23. Now, fortunately, we can declare that the function might return different types based on the input arguments by using function overloading. When the function is invoked with the person type of type user, we really want to only accept partials of type user and we want to return an array of type user. Similarly, we can repeat the process for the admin type where person type is of type admin, then criteria will be of type admin and the return type will be an array of admins. Now with these two overloads in place, when we invoke the function with the literal user, TypeScript infers the return type to be an array of users and with the literal admin, it infers an array of admins. And that's all for some quick tips on using TypeScript to better annotate your JavaScript. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.